Um, yeah, we are so honored to have these guys. I didn't even tell them that they all had to be here for the workshop. And I was like, yeah, just a couple, couple of the band if you guys want to be here. But worship leaders said they didn't trust the band to talk without them there. So that's why they, no, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't listen to anything I say. I'm, I'm lying to you. Uh, but I, uh, I so appreciate these guys' ministry and hearts, um, what they bring. I, I truly believe that the upper room is, is pioneering a new expression in the prophetic worship movement and the marrying of worship and prayer together. Um, and that doesn't take a profit because the Lord has already really done that and is really using their voice in a profound way. Um, so today what we're going to do, we have the whole crew and we, we have three mics. And so I'm going to just begin and start asking them some questions about uh, different band team dynamics. Some of that, the inner workings, this, this team has been together for so long, have so much history. And so I'm going to begin by asking the band some questions and then move into some of the, the worship leaders as well. And then we'll open it up to the room uh, for some questions. So sound good? You guys can maybe hold mics too. If you guys want. Check. Hi. One, two, three. Julian usually likes reverb on his uh, mic, so. <laughs> Check. <laughs> That's good. Whoa. Oh. Wow. Praise God. Sweet. Cool. Well, I'm just going to jump right in if you guys are cool uh, doing that. And so first, uh, first question um, for the band is uh, related to... Um, the culture of musicianship and I know there's a lot of different views of like do you have band directors does worship leader kind of call the shots like what when you're looking at a band like when you're setting culture and philosophy like what are what are some of the things that you are telling new members like this is you know this is who a musician is and this is their role on the team do you guys have different phrases or any any ways of defining that that's really helpful yeah, that's a really, really great question. Thank um, you. I can go to the go next Oscar. one, too. I'm just kidding. No, so one thing we... Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I know, so the tabernacle... Who knows the tabernacle of David? Does anyone know what it is? Well, we really model our worship and prayer movement out of that. And in the tabernacle of David, there's, there's a lot more musicians than singers. So I, don't, I forgot the exact amount of numbers. Um... But throughout scripture, uh, whenever, uh, so whenever, I think I'm thinking of one, whenever uh, the king of Israel needed a prophetic word, they went to Elisha. And Elisha's like, well, what, you know, long story short, he's like, bring me a musician so I can prophesy. So we, there's a lot of value to musicianships, to musicians. They're not just, you know, it's much more than just playing. It's much more than just a role. It's like they actually bring the sound brings the glory of God to a room. Yes. And we really want to emphasize that to them. We're like, hey, we really value parts. We really value, uh, you know, we have all like the ins and outs of like, hey, rehearsal is not a place for you to learn your parts, you know, learn beforehand. But we want you to cultivate your spiritual life, your devotion to the Lord, because that makes a big, big, big difference. So a, a big one's like, we're like, hey, it's like you're a prophetic musician. It's like, it's important. So how do you, if you have somebody who comes to your team mm -hmm. and they have just been kind of a parts player their whole life and they, all they know of worship is, you know, you listen to the song, you memorize the part, you play that part. You start speaking into identity and prophesying you are, you know, prophetic musician. What is the next step to have them step outside? Is there a safe place or a practical place where you begin to basically teach and train them to prophesy themselves? I can answer. Uh, you know, even last night I was thinking uh, throughout the set, and um, I could say that every person, whether you have a mic or not, you have a voice. And so we are big on, you know, stepping into a place of teaching a person to be able to speak or, in a sense, other, in other terms, prophesy on an instrument. And we, we do prayer sets. Everyone comes in and our... On our church, you can come and volunteer as a musician on our press sets. And we have about two hours worth of uh, worship and prayer. And so our, our big, yes, come with parts, obviously. Like, we love the idea and we love the, 
the coming forth and learning parts and growing in that. But um, we really value the voice of a musician in an instrument. Like, hey, how do you, how do you, how do you encounter God with an instrument? Because it's much more than just, hey, I'm going to get this thing right. I'm, I heard this uh, drum part and I'm going to just play it exactly. No, we, we really value the, the heart of, can you translate a pr- like a, like a worship through your heart into an instrument because it's sensed like it it, there's weight to uh, a musician uh, when they play and it's very I mean we don't say you know there's not a mic in front of us but there is weight that is carried so that that's one place that we really practically step into and uh, yeah we just throw them in hey I want Abby to share her heart on musicians because I know that you're personally really convicted about this and Abby as Will you share your heart? Well, your two hearts, because he has a baby inside, so you have two hearts. <laughs> Yay! Double it's hearts. crazy. Um, I mean, what Julian was saying, it's that they have a voice. I think it. I started carrying this when I married Gabriel. Gabriel's on the end. He plays bass with us. He does a lot more than play bass, but I married into a family of musicians. Oscar's my brother. Julian's my brother. Sebastian's my brother. And so I've seen and heard their process and how things make them feel and all the things and I I kind of see it like a a dance because I I'll I'll expound on that in a second but um practically even how like the stage is set up like we stand in the front the worship leaders stand in the front and the musicians always have the physical back seat and I've just always thought it was interesting and um because I see it like a dance where I Specifically with these guys, we have relationship, and so we know what gets each other. Like, I know that when I sing certain things, it it causes the musicians to encounter, and they know that when they play certain things, it causes me to encounter Jesus. We've, like, learned each other that way. So it's this dance. It's not, it's not they're always supporting me. It's they're leading me, and I'm leading them, and we kind of take it back and forth like a dance. And so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's just the fact that just because what Julian was saying, like, just because I have a microphone and I can say words, I've just learned that their sounds say so much more than I can. Like English or Spanish or whatever language you speak, like, words are not enough to convey certain things. They're just not. They never will be. Because we're talking to a God and we're talking about a God that is far beyond our language. And, so, And just to add, I, we have a heart uh, specifically to teach musicians to understand that music shifts atmospheres. Yeah. Um, you know, what you play it, with intention, it does shift. And like, it's like the example Oscar put of Elisha. Like the, it, the, the whole story is that King Jehoshaphat... Uh, I think there was an army coming up, but there was a situation, and they went to the prophet, and, the, and they were like, hey, prophet, we need, it. we need a word from God. And he's like, well, get me a musician to play, and then I'll hear God. And so we really take that on, and hey, like our role is let's step into this place, let's shift this atmosphere with sound so that the prophets, in a sense, the ones that the singers can prophesy and sing unto what the Lord is saying. Yeah. And so um, we just, we want to train musicians to see bigger than just parts. Like, I think it's important for musicians to learn parts. And, they, you know, there's seasons of learning and growing. But we're, when we're, what we're doing, what we're doing together, we really see it as a prophetic statement. And so that God is speaking today and now. And so we all take a role in that. And so, like, just to answer that question, our hearts are just to show, like, hey, we, we shift atmospheres together. It's together, you know, we, we move as a unit, and we're always listening to each other. We're listening to what Joel is singing, and we're like, Lord, let that encounter us. How does that sound like, you know, and how does it sound like? Like last night, we were, we were stepping in. We were just, we were, we were sitting, and you painted the picture perfectly last night, Elissa. It, felt, it did feel like we were walking around Jericho. We were just holding, a one, like, one cord, and we're just staying there, and we're saying, Lord, we're not moving until we see breakthrough, you know? And, and so we're like, how does breakthrough sound like in this atmosphere? You know, like it rumbles, it's, it's shakings, it's snares. It's, and so we're stepping into this actively. Um, and they're singing and prophesying 
into the room because we were sensing this is what God, what, what, like it's all active. Anyways, um, I don't know if you got yeah. I just want to tie it up. Yep. I'll be Do the it. last for this question. But Do it, man. There's, I, I want to put myself in your shoes. Like you're at a church and uh, maybe your musicians aren't the best. We've kind of all been there. So like how do they, how does someone come in that knows about worship culture in general? How do they plug into this atmosphere? And I think we have a prayer room. So it's this very natural thing we do week in and week out. You may not have a prayer room at your church. So how do you do that? And I think like Joel talks about a lot, but practicing the presence, like maybe outside of what you're doing for Sunday, you need to have time set aside where you guys get in a room together and maybe without instruments at first, like maybe one guy brings an acoustic, but you guys connect on a heart level and then start bringing instruments into a room. So like, okay, you guys meet on Wednesday night to practice for Sunday morning. Have another time during the week that you guys just practice for no other benefit than just to grow. So it's, and then you can try different things. Like the, the playbook is just open. There's all opportunities. So like things we've done is like, there's a couple chord progressions that I know Oscar is probably gonna touch on in a set because they touch his heart. So there's like three or four progressions that he's just gonna call out. So these are progressions we can just remember. We use the number system, so in any key we can apply it. And then we just practice that progression. And then from there, the drums, like Sebastian will have something that comes out. And from there, it's like Alyssa is inspired to sing because of this. So these things are all growing on each other, but you have to value it by creating time for it. And it needs to be outside of the windmill of the week to week. So, And just to finalize, so it's like we practice the presence of God. We value risk. Risk, we love risk. It's like we're just... Um, and then lastly, uh, new sounds, new songs break old rhythms. Uh, new songs and new sounds break old rhythms. Time, it's so normal to like get into a habit, get into a rhythm, get into a structure, which everything, rhythm, structure, they're all really good. But it's like when I find myself in that place, I'm like, I need something fresh. I need to, I need to like... Find, I, I'm like, let's find a new sound. Let's sing a new song, you know, because something shifts automatically. You're like, wow, what happened? You know, so those three things are really deep core values in my heart. Yeah, that's awesome. So good. On the, the, the side of chord progressions, music, um, you know, changing those things up, how much is that suggested by maybe somebody on an instrument or is there typically like an MD who's who's calling that out, like how do, you, how do you communicate those things, you know, in the moment when you're feeling, a, oh, God's doing something new, so we want to we wanna bring a new sound to, you know, break the old pattern. So practically, how does that look? How does the authority of that That's work? That's a great question. So I, ha- I, Thank you. I have the MD, so <laughs> kind of like I have the final call, but as a leader, good leaders bring clarity to the room or to your team. So that's one thing that I do. I love to bring clarity to it. And also don't like to bottleneck anything. So um, like it either comes from my, I'm, I'm like, hey, let's go the one, the one, five, six, four. Or I, I, I trust them enough that they just go for it. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I got the progression. And I say what they're playing after they played it. So there's a moment of like oh, a little bit of confusion that I'm like, hey, let's, let's follow Gabe. Or let's follow Garrett. Let's follow Julian. Because there's life in that. So that's kind of the way it works. I either say it but also give the freedom to, for them just to step out, and I submit to it. Yeah. And if it feels a little wonky, I'm like, hey, let's go back to the one. Or, hey, let's go back to the old progression. And there's, like, mutual submission in that. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up, actually. We, we have a term in our house. It's actually, uh, we wrote a prayer manual, and it's in there. <laughs> so uh, it's really good. I just kind of put it out there. But we do, we do call it mutual submission. And it's actually, um, I believe it came from one of Bill Johnson's preachings where he uh, preached specifically about, um, you know, there's, there's hunting dogs. And then when one dog, so they usually take them in pairs. And one dog gets a scent, the other dog automatically starts following the other, you know, the other dog. So uh, whichever dog got the scent, immediately the other one starts going and they both go together. And that, from that preaching, we're able to like uh, take this mutual submission where it's like, it's all open-ended. We're all, we're all seeking what is the Lord on. Yeah. And so it could be on a, 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 a song, it could be on a sound, and we're just here, or chord progression. 
And so we're all like, it, it, it's, we're seeking the, that's it. You know, the, oh, the, the thing that turns your heart and says, hey, that, that, even while Joel was preaching the faith, the faith yeah. moment, like, yeah. okay, that sound gave me faith. Yeah. Uh, again, last night, if you're here last night, I, I, there was a moment when he started hitting the snare. It was at the, towards the end. It was like that, da, da, da. And I, immediately my, my heart was like, hey, that, that's, giving, that's shifting something, man. And so we all come under that sound. And so we all start making that sound. And I'm sure that they start saying something. So, and it's the same thing with chord progressions, you know. There's chord progressions that just move hearts and, and shift hearts, you know. Anyways. Hey, I want to I wanna share some... Oh, sorry, Sebastian. Just when that stuff happens, even practically as worship leaders, like last night, I, I remember the moment when Sebastian started hitting the snare. And I generally, my body will literally like... I'll, shift. I'll shift and I'll literally look at him and I'm like, like literally say, yes, I'll <laughs> mouth, yes. And communication is everything. Yes. Like, you know, we're on stage and it's, it could be awkward to be like, like the, the weirdest thing I could do is imagine if I'm singing and Sebastian right there and I'm like, hey, Sebastian, like, go stay there. Isn't that so weird? But it, but it kind of feels like we have to, am I right? Yeah. But if I was just like, bro, that's so good. It. Like, at the end of the day, we're up there to minister to the Lord. And so, practically, you just, you could just, Alyssa and I, or and Abby, I'll be like, hey, are you feeling anything in the middle? Like, last night, <laughs> the stage is so big, <laughs> the stage is so big that I had to walk to Oscar, <laughs> and it was so awkward, because I was like, <laughs> and I'm walking, and I'm like, let's go to Alleluia, right? But I, or I could have been like, you know, and it's, it's, I don't know why we think we have to do that, but communication is everything. Looking at someone and saying, that's good. Keep going. Is It's everything. You're just communicating to your musicians. Hey, bro, you hear God, and I'm going to come under it. You know? So anyway, I just wanted to share that. So good. Really I good. wanted to share on mutual submission a little bit, because mutual submission doesn't look like it feels sometimes. Like, Gabe like was telling me, he's like, I feel like you need to play the snare, and you need to do the snare thing. And I'm like, bro, I have no idea. Like, it, <laughs> it feels, like, really risky. It feels like left field, and I didn't want to do it. But I submitted my heart and myself under what Gabe was actually telling me the whole night. And right before that, actually, he's like, I feel like we're walking around the walls of Jericho, and I feel like there's breakthrough, and I feel like it's... The, and then Alyssa literally right after that, she's like... Oh, she, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah it's, it's just like... No yeah, it's it was crazy. so funny. I know. Oh, God. <laughs> it was so funny. I, I, no, I literally tell Sebastian, I'm like, he takes off his ear, I'm like, hey, dude, I feel like you're supposed to lead this. Like, you're supposed to... Like, play. literally word for and, word yeah. from what and then, you just And said. then he listens like, I just feel like the bands are supposed to prophesy. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Could you, uh, could you show us what Joel was doing, Gabe? But all that to say, I just feel like I, it's necessary to say that mutual submission sometimes feels risky, and it doesn't feel like, like oh, like you, like you, it almost feels like you're dying to yourself all the time. Like, for me, I was like, I'm like, I'm dying to myself in this moment. Forget what I feel. Gabe feels something. Let me go see what he feels. And then it, I trusted Gabe 100%, and... And I think that broke something like in our in our team together, and ultimately in the room. Just because even that, if we wanted to dissect that moment, I wasn't feeling anything. So I'm in the back. I'm like, guys, anyone have anything? I have nothing. Just being honest. And then all of a sudden, Sebastian plays the snare. I'm like, yes, that's it. I'm like, go under it until I receive and feel something in my heart from the Lord. And then I prophesy. Yeah. yeah and and Joel mentioned this to me just now. So I'm gonna say this. But uh, it's something that we've built and we've intentionally, in our culture, and leading again to other people, that we have over 100 musicians that serve. So we are intentional saying, hey, we're building a culture of trust. I trust God and Joel. I trust God and Gabe. I trust the Holy Spirit and Sebastian that, it, that whatever he's playing, they're singing, I'm, I'm just saying yes, you know? Yeah. And so... With that, like, it, we've been intentional building a culture of trust, of understanding that we all hear God. It's not just the guys with the mic or just the guys that, you know, that can play the, the, the better part. You know, and it's everyone. And so this, uh, yeah, yeah. I want to say, I want to add to that. Uh, I'll just be quick. It's just, I, I, I know that may, maybe many of you are like, well, maybe in our community, like, we have 30 minutes of worship and then the message, and I think that's beautiful. And I think that it all starts with honor, honoring your leadership, honoring what has your leadership given you. Like, if they're like, hey, you have 30 minutes to lead worship, and you honor that. You don't complain because you want an hour. You honor the 30 minutes. Because the, the thing is, then your leadership can trust you with more. 
Does that make sense? And so um, you may not have, we have an hour of worship, sometimes more. And that's what our, that's how we've, we've been entrusted with that. Sometimes I want to do two hours, you know, but, and then Michael's like, no, we got to get to the message. And I'm like, yes, sir. You know, uh, but, but it's, I just wanted to say that, like, just because you don't have an hour of worship, what do you have in front of you? How can you cultivate that? Even with your musicians, how can you communicate with a piano player before soundcheck and say, Hey bro, I'm feeling like in this song, instead of going straight to the bridge, can we just kind of stay in the chord progression for the chorus and kind of see where we go? Maybe. And he might say, I don't know. And then you could say, just trust me. Let's just try it and sound check. And it works. And maybe it doesn't. It's okay. Because you cre- it's communication. It's honor. Does that make sense? And so um, I just wanted to diffuse anything like, well, you don't understand our culture. But it's more so you may be in a different culture, but you can cultivate where you're at. Does that make sense? So that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I, I would love to stay on that just for a moment. And any of you who, who want to speak on this, because when I came to, when I visited Upper Room, that was the, the thing that struck me the most was the culture of honor. Um, and I just kind of observed everything, jumped on the inside, and that mutual submission idea. I love that I could go into a briefing, and I didn't know who the heck was leading it. And I didn't know, because, like, you know, the, the, the bass player, the prophetic dancers, and they're sharing the, kind of the lead of where everything's going, and everyone's honoring the point. Uh, of that moment, and uh, there wasn't a lack of authority. There just was such a high culture of honor for everyone. And so I, I would love for you guys to speak into, like, how was that developed, maintained? You know, what are some things, you know, for, for those who are like, man, I know I need to walk in this in a, in a better way. I think the biggest thing is we're always present. Like, on stage, we're 100% engaged with everyone. It's like, so if, because... I could stick, I'm like, I'm just going to stick to the drums. I'm just going to focus what the kick pattern is doing to stay on pocket or whatever, you know, as a bass player. But I don't do that. I, li- I listen to what the piano player is playing, what the guitar player is playing, what Joel's singing. And I'm just like fully open all the time. So whenever the Lord comes on uh, Julian playing a line, I'm like, yes, let's go. So it's like the, the, the uh, being present is 100% key. So. Yeah, I want to, when it comes to honor, uh, honor is given, trust is built. Um, so no matter who I'm playing with, it's like I will honor them. Um, despite of whatever I might feel, I might think, you know, I'm like, ah, I don't really know if I want to go there, but I'm going to honor them. But as I honor them, what happens is like our hearts get kind of kindred together and connected. And then I, I'm like, oh, trust is being built here. So from there, I'm like, oh, I trust him. And the, or vice versa, like, oh, they trust me. So it's like for me, when it comes to the culture of honor, it's like you always have to come to the place I'm like, I don't know their story. I don't know what they love, but it's like I'm not like when Corey Russell. I don't know if you guys know who he is. When he first moved to Upper Room, I didn't know Corey. You know, I heard his, I'm heard him from his messages, but I didn't know Corey. I honor him. Uh, it was, and then he goes to me. He's like, "Hey, man, I really I love minor four on the floor when I'm preaching. I'm like, great. I'm like, I'm not a minor guy. You know, I love major. Just I just like it. You know, it's like there's no wrong or right, but just me. But I was like, I'm gonna honor him. So when I honored him, I actually positioned me to receive what he's experienced with the Lord, with the minor chords and, like, the prophetic nature of him. And it's, like, to a point, like, two years later, I'm like, man, I tr- first, I have trust him now. And two, it's like, I've actually, I do love minors. You know, I do. It's something, <laughs> it's grown into, it's kind of grown in, ingrained in me. And that's kind of what I tell everyone. I was like, hey, honor's given, trust is built. Just, it's, it's a slow build, you know. Some people, you trust them like that, you're like, I get you. Other people, it's like, hey, let's. Let's have honest conversations. Hey, why did you go here? Why didn't you go here? During, like, we, do, we have debriefs after some prayer sets. And we're like, hey, I ask questions like, Joel, why did you sing this song? It's like, and then he's like, well, I was feeling this, 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 and this. I'm like, oh, I got you. I understand you now. And we start to develop trust. And that's kind of how you start to develop that trust within yeah and i want to take it like a step further it's then it becomes like a relationship then i'm like i know what joel likes he likes whenever i play this or i know what uh, we call it trigger i know what triggers oscar when because so it's just like it, even deeper it's like we develop a relationship on that stage so it's like and then we nurture that so yeah it's good yeah. I, can i say one thing mm-hmm. just to like it's you said it like having debriefs i just would say don't be afraid to have hard conversations like, there have been so many moments when I'm like, why the frick did you sing that or play that? Like, 
somebody that I maybe like, because we're, we have so many people serving in the prayer room. We have honestly no idea who we might be on a set or a service with at any given point sometimes. And so sometimes there's like people I've never, I haven't personally spent time with. And I'm just like, I don't understand why we did that. But I just ask, like you just have to ask and it builds that trust. It's just like a very practical thing is just ask questions or say, hey, that made me feel kind of weird or that made me feel this way. It, it, has never, it has never caused more of a problem to be honest about something feeling weird. It's actually only helped and brought us closer. It's a huge part of why all of us are really close because we have awkward conversations. Super awkward, uncomfortable. Joel asks more questions than anybody <laughs> I've ever known, but I've learned about him. Even like, this is an example I've learned from about Joel that when he asks questions, it's not because he's like doubting me or what. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, stop questioning my identity. Oh my God. But he just genuinely wants to understand. I've learned a lot from Joel about that. Just like, so like seek to understand. So, so yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, one more follow-up on that debrief because you guys have a high culture and value. For, you're, you're like, take risks, mm -hmm. step out. You know, like everyone's prophesying. And so, you know, you undoubtedly are having lots of moments where either people are off or sing something off or, uh, you know, where it's not sitting right with people. And, and, you know, you've just been like the, go for it, you know, and they're like, okay. And they step out and just sing something that's like way off or, you know, unscriptural or whatever. Like, how are you guys approaching that honest conversation? I, I, I know you started with a the asking question, but if you're like, hey, why did you sing that Jesus was married to on earth? And, and, they, and they tell you why. So then what's the, you know, like, like after you learned why they did it, you know, what's that next step of being able to correct without crushing them, but also being able to protect what you have? Let's, let's play it out. So they're saying Jesus is married. Can, yeah. You know, you're I saying that. that. I'm like, hey, Caleb, why? Help me understand the concept of Jesus it's just, is married. Well, you told me that, you know, that Jesus lives inside of me and to trust what he's saying. And in that moment, I just saw a picture of him being married to somebody on earth. And I was like, God, you would give, why would you give me this picture if it wasn't true? And so I just sang it. I'm like, I would tell him, I was like, man, that's, that's, a, that's your personal revelation. I think you should, ask, you know, keep asking the Lord in that. But I'm like, there's better language of saying that he lives in you. Because uh, I'm like I, when I I'm like when I'm thinking about you being in a room, I think about the person that's not engaging, and it's like from a from a lyrical standpoint, it's like you put theology in people's mouth when they start singing, and that's really really important. Words matter; they matter a lot. That's good, Oscar. And I'm like if if you can, I'm like let let's let's talk through it. I can give you some practical like he lives in me, you know, spirit, <laughs> you know, spirit and the bride say come. I don't know. There's just more biblical ways of. Yeah. of I don't diminish, diminish the conversation, but I help, I help them, like, put better language to it, you know? Redirect. redirect. I'm like, hey, there's just better language. Here's some scriptures. Let's go through it. Redirect. Hey, think about the person that's on their phone on, on Facebook. It's like, you know, it's like they're disengaged. Yeah. It's like, think about them. Put language in their mouth. You know, it's, it's simple. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, like, around this subject, I, I think, like, it's important, too, to identify, like, the goal of, like, the set. And at Upper Room, like, the goal is for everyone to encounter the Lord together. And so in order to do that, we're asking the Holy Spirit, like, what revelation of Jesus are you wanting to point us to together? And so on a set, if, if I'm leading my set and Abby and Joel are my co-leads, um, like an unspoken, like not rule, I guess, but an unspoken rule is like, oh, Elyse is the lead of the set, you know? So, and we have a worship leader for every prayer set. And so it's my heart to empower Joel and Abby on my team. Um, and so this whole mutual submission thing, it's like, oh, it's not that I don't want them to sing what's in their heart, or it's not that, like, 
I'm just going to let Abby go off on whatever she's singing, and then I'm going to bring it back, and then I'm going to let Joel, like, if Abby starts singing about the Lord as a deliverer, it's like, great, I'm going to mutually submit to that for a little bit, and then Joel's going to come in and start singing as God as our righteousness, and it's like, wait a second, so who's right? Who heard God? You know what I mean? And the thing is, they both did. Like, you're not going to miss it. Like, we all hear the Lord. So the mutual submission part of what we're talking about is so important because our desire is to encounter something about the Lord together. So if Abby starts singing about the Lord is a deliverer, me and Joel already know, okay, I'm going to submit under her faith as God is our deliverer. And what I'm sensing from the Holy Spirit is neither wrong and I didn't miss it, but it's unity. I want to encounter together as a room. Come I don't on. just want you to hear my song about what yes. I heard and then Woo. let Joel hear his song about what he heard. But yet there's no unity and no one's actually encountering anything about Jesus. Mm. You know, they're just listening to us be creative. And that's not the point. That's it. And so the point is like in a set, we're all wanting to encounter Jesus together at the same time. And I didn't even know that was possible, but it is. And the reason why this is possible and this is important is because, you know, at the end of the Bible where it says the spirit and the bride say come, that means everyone at the same time is going to hear the same thing by the spirit and sing it at the same time on earth is really going to happen. And Jesus is going to come back because of that. So we are tapping into what we're doing, eternity. We're tapping into, it wouldn't be possible for the entire church seeing the same thing at the same time on our own, only by the Spirit. And so we're learning how to hear the Spirit, how to mutually submit to one another. It's like, man, it's not that my revelation is wrong or I'm missing God. It's just that this isn't about me. I want to encounter God together and be transformed together, and that builds trust, and that builds unity, so in those places with my singers, it's like, hey, we were singing about the Lord's our deliverer, and and then you started singing about him being married, like, (laughs) (laughs) tell me about that, you know, and it was like, what were you sensing, why did you want to go there, you know, and it, and you just kind of find out that, like, we're learning how to mutually submit to one another, and we're learning to lay down, you know, my, identity a tied tied that can be tied to my performance and I want you to hear what I have to sing you know and that's not necessarily bad it's it's our journeys you know guys like I think the biggest part too is we've all had to process in our hearts of like man we love singing we love playing we love to be affirmed in what we're doing that's not bad we love the stage because there's a part of our calling attached to it and that's okay admit that I think the biggest thing is we don't admit it, so then we hide it, and we're stuck in false humility, and then we get on stage, and we're in confusion. We don't know what we're singing. I'm overthinking everything. I can't submit to you because I want you to hear me. And it's just like we've talked about it. You know, we've had to be like, yeah, you know what? Like, that was about me. And so there's so much that goes into play, but I think in family in a safe place, like, we can admit these things. Like, man, we're, we're singers, we're musicians, we're creatives. We love that space. So let's actually diffuse all the things of I can't love what I do and I need to be humble. And like, oh, it's like once you step into that place, man, you just diffuse so many lies, accusations, jealousies, envies. And then I get on stage and I don't care what Joel sings about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to submit because I trust him. And I care about encountering God. Yeah. So, I, w- I want to share a yeah. couple core values. I want to transcribe that and like put it on the wall. I know. Just the last five minutes. The whole like, thing. Like, so we have like four core, core values in our home, in prayer room specifically. It's called, it's faith, unity, encounter, liberty. Um, it's faith in who he is. Really, really important. In his nature. He is faithful. He is Lord. He's a healer. Really, really important. Worship is agreeing to who he is, who Jesus is. It's about, it's the Holy Spirit giving us eyes to see and ears to hear him. And then from there, unity, we, we encounter, we sing that together, yeah. we sing it together collectively, and what happens with that is that we actually encounter a man yeah. who is faithful, we actually encounter together a man who heals, we encounter a man who delivers, yeah. and what happens from there is like any lie 
are like, man, I don't really believe God's a healer. It's like, well, there's faith in the room for it. Yes. And you're delivered from false narratives of God from your inside. Yes. Oh, man, I don't really think God loves me. Well, God, God is love. He's like, and he, he's the one who authors a faith in your heart, and he delivers you. He makes you free from this false narrative that you didn't even know you had. And that's really important. So it's faith, unity, encounter, liberty. We, it's a high, high value in our house. We, we, we kind of set it as uh, how we see the spirit move um, is this faith, unity, encounter, liberty. We, we've just noticed and we've been, uh, and our pastor, you know, just kind of give him a little, he, uh, he, he told us to be, uh, what is it? He said to learn and I mean and we we want to learn and give language to what God is doing in our house and this of the presence stewards of pre the presence we don't just want to you know play worship awesome that was a great set you know like no we we we've been the last few years of our life we've been sitting and saying hey how can we put language what are we actually doing up here you know what when when it doesn't just okay awesome that was a great set no like God what are you doing and so just to, just to kind of point what Oscar's saying, uh, this is what we feel like the Spirit does when we are playing, singing, we're entering to worship. It's this faith, unity, encounter, liberty. And the goal is, what Elisa said, is for all of us to encounter together, the whole room. Not just even the, the, the musicians, singers, but no, the whole room, audience together. We're all singing this one song, and we're all seeing Jesus together by the Holy Spirit. You know, that's the goal that we want, and that's what we step into. So good. So, so good. So good. It's awesome. Um, I'm gonna. That's a great point. I feel like they just summarized so much. This would be a great point to shift to start taking some questions. Uh, so, if you have a question that you want to ask the panel, go ahead and raise your hand. I saw this hand first, so I'm gonna run to you. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm a worship pastor Hi, from the mountains, of North Carolina. Hi, y'all. Hi, awesome. Jenny. Thank you so much. So, when you were talking about. Um, how you could hear everyone and you were collaborating and playing, I was thinking, oh, but I got so many people on my team who can't mix. And so, and then they'll be like, well, I can't put drums in because then I can't hear myself. And I know y'all were probably thinking that too. So, you got any help for me? Like in their in-ear monitor? Yeah, their mix sucks. Great question. Yeah, Fix it. So the, so you guys have a bad mixer. Is that is that kind of the the person in the, the personal mixer? Their IEMs are they would okay. they can't even I I those. would I would ask your front of house guy, whoever the guy is, be like, Hey, can you give us a training on how to mix our ears? You know, if you don't know, you just don't know. You know? And it sounds like he doesn't know, who that person doesn't know. So what do you do is like find someone that does know and help tra and help train your teams like hey mm -hmm. when you're mixing you know have drums if you like they kind of give you some handles of like oh this is how mix should sound because I remember when I first started playing music I was like I was like I just plugged in my ears turn up the master you're like how it sounds is how it sounds you know but it's a journey you know it'll, it'll slowly get there but find someone that can help you and I think again it's like with trust you know saying hey um I know you don't put drums in your ears. How about let's just try the kick drum. Let's just like, just feel it. Just encounter it. Just feel it. And so I think like, uh, again, talking about it, you know, um, and I really feel like specifically you could start with drums. Like practically you could start with drums saying, if someone doesn't like drums, like, hey, let's just put the kick. I just want you to really like encounter that kick or the snare or something. And so, um, yeah. Good. Gabe, give me a 30 second breakdown of your mix philosophy in your ears. All right, drums, drums. Yes, I love drums. Drums, if I feel it, I get into it. I always tell Sebastian, I'm like, if you're playing the snare, I love it. Like, or the kick, I, it's something inside me, like, just, what's the word? It triggers me. There it is. It triggers me. And so, drums, then uh, piano, bass, vocals, and then guitars. Sorry. Everything. <laughs> no, but I love you. I love you. I still hear you. Hi, I'm Michael, um, Michael. worship Michael. pastor of Radiant Church in Jackson. Um, yeah. Great question, by the way. I just walked through that about a year ago. So that brings me to my question. What's up? Oh, you tapped my leg. Um, we just worked on that about a year ago, and now we're starting to hear each other, and 
probably what 75% of our band has been playing together the last 10 years. Um, and we under, I like, I resonate with that. Like I know triggers of every person on my team and now we're talking with each other. How do, what can I do as a, as a worship pastor or leader to help? Maybe the question is, did, do you guys remember making that switch from, we're kind of starting to talk, but how do we cultivate it? Does that make sense? Like, how do you make that transition into practicing it and giving verbiage to it rather than just like hey we're all feeling something but what do we do with that you know what i'm saying like in a, in a worship setting yeah yes in a worship setting. you're yeah. trying to get language to what the lord's doing in your house is that is that the question no i, I think question. i think it's more we've been playing together so long we're knowing but it's almost like hey i hear this i hear what you're doing and we kind of start to follow it but then it falls apart because it's like uh, we haven't made that full transition to... I don't know if that makes sense. It does. Uh, do you have an MD? No. You don't have a music director. And that's like what's going on in my brain. Him so, and I actually just talked Bro, about practically, so um, last night when I walked up to Oscar and I was like, hey, let's go into Alleluia. Yeah, yeah. Like he has the ability to communicate with everyone uh, on the team at the same time because he has a microphone. Right, and it's silent in the house, but everyone else in the in ears can hear it. And so, super practical could be, for example, you're the worship pastor, worship leader, and you're singing "Alleluia." All the angels cry, "Holy is the Lord God." And you're like, man, and inside of you, you're like, I really feel like I want to sing that He's holy even more. So, all literally, what you could do is you could go up to your MD and say, "Hey, can we just stay on this chord progression?" And I'm going to sing about Him being holy. And just go with me. Let's see where we go. And Literally, what Oscar will do is, hey, guys, Joel's feeling like he wants to sing about him being holy. Hey, musicians, let's back him up. And then we'll also the co-leads will be like, they immediately will say, okay, we're now going to back him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's so practical. Like, I love that question because it kind of diffuses like, well, how do you practically do it? I think having an MD would be amazing. And or unless I know that some musicians, some worship leaders have like a, is it called a trigger? Where, a talk back where you can actually do the talk back to. Whatever works for you, do it. An MD is amazing because you're able to communicate at the same time to everyone so <laughs> yeah 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 bro and then that could even take weight off your shoulders as a worship leader where you can really trust the md to like if you want to change instead of going to the one five six four you go to the one over three five six four and it just changes it up and he's making those calls so yeah i hope that helps yeah i don't know if this is like a step behind me i feel like maybe i should have said this and then joel said his practical tip but also, I know we keep saying, like, have honest conversations and whatever, but one of our key leaders, Jonathan Lewis, he talks a lot about the song of the Lord, and it's what we were, what we were all saying, like, where is the wind? Where is, the, where is God, and how do we follow him? Who's he on? What sound is he on? What words is he on? And so just, like, talking about that, like, J. Lou, will, oh, oh, Jonathan Lewis, a lot of times he'll be like, did you feel that? Like, Gabe played that thing, or... Elissa sang that thing, did you feel it? That was the song of the Lord. And then we all know like, oh, now we're gonna get under that. Yes. It is kind yes. of a practical thing to just yeah. like out loud, even in the talk back, like, do you feel that? Yes. And yes. he'll, and he, a lot of times he'll be like, that person doesn't know how to feel it yet, but it's okay. Cause we're gonna teach them. Like they will learn. Yeah. And, one, and so. Well, one practical thing, one practical, like we're, we're privileged enough to have the prayer room. And Miller always says like, the prayer room, the Sunday nights, our Sunday services is the overflow of what we do in the prayer room. And so it's like something practical you could do. It's like you could uh, get a team and just play until you feel something, you know, and you could and you could direct. You could be like, hey, uh, drummer, I want you to just start the set. You know, it's something so pr practical. And then whenever you feel you encounter the Lord of him playing, hey, a bass player, I want you to play after you encounter. And so, and so you start developing this, like, culture, and then um, all of a sudden, you're going to start doing a Sunday, and then the drummer is going to start taking over, and he's going to feel the presence. He's going to be like, he's going to, you know, so it's practicing the presence. So. Real quick, last thing on this. This is good, guys. You can go to the one chord, and that's your safety net, and everything can come down. And Joel does it a lot, because Joel doesn't know how, like, we're in a moment, and he knows where we need to go, and he's like, I, in his head, he's like, I can't connect to them. But we can come down, and then we can take flight again to where we need to go. So sometimes it might be that, because you're in the moment. You're like, I feel this thing. How do I communicate it? And there's this train wreck about to happen. I see it happening. But you just come down to the one again, and then reset, and then go from there. So 
And it, that, if you've never done that before with your community, that might feel weird. But if you just decide this is how we're going to do it, they're going to go with you. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I just want to massively affirm that. Just the, because it, it brings the, the simplicity of, you know, when things start to get, get chaotic, I mean, you always look for, look, let's simplify, get on the same page, and yeah. then go somewhere. Yeah. And so what you just described is so wise. In, in the midst of a little bit of that clunkiness, it's just the, oh, wait, let's just reset. And then go again, and I, I, yeah, just, nice comment, bro. <laughs> Sick comment, dude. Yes, yeah, Sebastian. Oh, you, were you just, what were you doing? You're not making a comment? I was going to make a joke, I taught him that. Okay, cool. Uh, more questions? One last thing on that, just real quick. I just want to, like, people don't know what they don't know, so, like, you're creating culture in the moment, yes. too. So yes. when you start doing those things, they're like, okay, this is, okay, this is good. This is yeah. God, so... I am a worship leader, um, Utica, Michigan, and um, I just had a question. Um, I know that you've probably been able to like add to your team like very uh, specifically and on purpose. <laughs> um, when I became a worship leader, some of the members on our band had been on the team longer than I was at the church. So um, I think over the past few years, like our team, we kind of had two teams that were going on where, you know, and so we had two different cultures going on. So over the past few months, we felt like the Lord was, you know, trying to unify us. And so we've mixed up all the, <laughs> all the people. And so I am leading more. And what's happened is, you know, uh, the musicians who were just coming on, playing their set, I'm done, get my guitar, boop, you know. Now we're like, oh, guys, what's God doing in your life? Like, can I share a word? I don't want that. <laughs> and so I'm struggling as a leader, um, you know, with, it's a small percentage. Most of them are like, yes, let's go. Let's lean in. Let's, you know, we're not just here to perform, you know, most of our people. Um, but a certain person in particular is just completely opposed to um, that kind of leadership. And so I'm just curious to see, like, <laughs> and I know it might be different for your experience. You're interviewing people and inviting them on or not. Um, but, you know, having someone who um, is, you know, I'm saying, okay, we're going to pray before the set. Let's just gather and just ask the Lord to go before us and to use us. And this person is like, you're going to start to pray. I'm taking my guitar and I'm going in the back. <laughs> or we're trying to share a word and he's packing up his gear and taking off. So I'm thinking, like, okay, I don't know how to. How to pastor through that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's for, for, for that's an invitation, you know, to draw closer. Because uh, something in my marriage, that I'm like, uh, conflict leads to intimacy, you know. And so I feel like, I feel like that's just an open door to like say, hey, uh, why? You know, just just opening that conversation. Because if he's packing up, just I don't want anything to do with prayer or anything. It's just like, hey, I, I want to understand why. Like, and I I want to uh, I want to help you as much as I can. And, you know, so and that's even bringing more people on, like, say, so I feel like he's kind of, like, opening a door in a weird way, like, you know, um, how I, I'm trying to explain it. Yeah, that's just so, I feel like that's just an invitation to draw closer to him, whoever that is. So. I think the biggest thing is casting vision. Like, without vision, people perish. We know that. But I think if you're doing that and they don't know, there's probably some kinetic energy where people are just going with it. But, like, if you set this vision that we can all go to, then it's inevitably it will weed out people that don't want to be a part of that vision or maybe they shouldn't be and that's easy for me to say because i'm up here on a mic just telling you that you live in the real world with your church and your relationships and that can be hard yeah. and we've had to walk through we've had people that before sebastian was here we had a drummer and he's not with us anymore but we cast vision and then we had to say okay that's okay we love you and we send you but this is the vision we're doing we're going to so minister good. to the lord first this is what we're going to do and so because of that, it's not only did it, so at the beginning it was like, oh, we just weeded a bunch of people out, but then it started bringing people because when we lift him up, like he draws who needs to be there. And so I think if you start setting that vision, yes. he's going to recognize that either this is where I need to be or it's where I not, you know, maybe I shouldn't be there. And that may be, may be hard. Maybe he's been there 10 years and it's like you thank him and honor him for that service. Like you're, there's an open door here, but this is our vision. Yeah. And I think that sets the tone and parameters to let the Lord start to work on people's hearts to draw them, should I be here or not? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, you stole every single word out of my mouth. 
Yeah, write down the vision. It's important. Vision is important. You're, you're creating the culture. A good leader brings clarity. They see the end of the goal, and then the Lord brings people to help you get there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, write it down. Really important. Emphasize it. Like, we, we value prayer. We value worship. We value his presence. You know, whatever the Lord has for you. Yeah. And then there's also a pastoral side as well. Uh, Gabriel touched on it. It's like the fact that he's being honest is actually a good thing. Yeah. The fact that he's like, I don't want to be here, it's actually a door for you to say, hey, help me understand why. Yeah. And then from there, he's like, you know, but, you know, I was hurt by the... And then from there, opportunity for the Lord bring healing yes. upon his heart. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like from there, it's asking the Lord to, like, like help me get a heart for him. And then three, I think intercession is great. Yes. Pr- yeah. Have your team pray. Like, have you pray for him yes. alone. Lord, touch him. Lord, minister to him. Yeah. And the Lord will do it. He hears your prayers. And, and like in the weirdest way, he's like craving that, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. he he's wanting someone to pray for him. So, yeah. And I just I feel it in my heart. I carry him in my heart because like yeah. I've been there, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, so and so, good. yeah. So I'll, let's pray for him. And and I really feel like he's about to encounter the Lord. Yes. He's he's gonna encounter the yeah. Uh, I'm not. What's his name? No. Yeah. Uh, what, what does he uh, play? Guitar. Him. Guitar. <laughs> We're gonna call him. Out. What's his email address? Just, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, wait, I, can we just um, what's your name Amanda. Amanda Lord I just pray for Amanda yes. and just a yeah. leadership yes. on her life the yes. call Father for yes, her Jesus. worship team Father I pray yes. for vision from heaven yes. Father but I pray for a unity with her worship yeah. team yes. I pray for these specifics Father I yeah. pray for open doors that they might these these yeah. musicians might step in Father and hear you and see you Father and jump in Jesus. to what you're doing in yeah. this house Father so I pray that Father I pray for the grace over her yes. specifically Father on, to lead Father. Yeah. Father I pray for the grace to lead yes. I pray Father and I actually saw you writing down yes. and sitting with the Lord and saying Lord speak to me for the next a uh, year, yeah. the next two years, the next five years, and I, I, I and so fa- so Father, I just pray right now, Father, for the grace to lead, yes. the grace to pastor, yes. the grace yes. to speak, and the grace to uh, just grow in this in, in this worship culture, yeah. Jesus. And I just feel like a download's about to happen uh, within within this week that you're gonna great, get vision, clear yes. vision, what the Lord wants you to do for the church. And for, for the worship, so I just pray for Amanda that she just gets the most clearest vision yes, that uh, she's going to present you, this to her pastor saying, hey, I feel like the Lord's telling me this. And they're going to say, yes, let's run with it. And so, yeah, yes. amen. And I feel like the Lord's giving you wine and he's going to bring people around that's going to yes. help you build the wine skin. So, Lord, I pray that you bring those people, Lord. Thank you for the wine that you've deposited in Amanda. I pray, thank you that... It's sweet. It's great. But I ask for wine skin. We don't want that wine to be spoiled and dropped. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Hey, Amanda, can you stand up? Uh, well, can, if you're around her, can you like lay hands on her? Um, I just feel like the Lord wanted to honor you. I feel like, um, feel like you are so humble. Yeah. You're so humble, and you have chosen to time and time again forgive and forgive and forgive and I felt like the Lord was going to give you double honor um, I felt like uh, where you have been humiliated um, I'm going to read something over you Isaiah 61 verse 1 the spirit of the Lord is upon you or upon me but I'm going to say the spirit of the Lord is upon Amanda because the Lord has anointed Amanda yes. and I'm going to skip to verse 7 instead of your shame you will have double a double portion and instead of humiliation they will shout for joy over the portion Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. And Lord, I thank you for Amanda. I thank you, God, that you anointed Amanda to be uh, in the position that she's in, Lord. And God, we break off any lies that have tried to keep her silent for years. Yeah. Anything that's made you, t- anything that tells you to shut up, Amanda, is not the Lord. And so we break that off of you. And I actually feel like there's like this atomic bomb inside of you yes. that yes. sometimes almost goes off, but for some reason it's just scary. And I feel like the Lord is going to make you explode from the inside out. So Lord, whatever is inside of her, God, we just ask for it to come out yeah. and to bless the people yes. around her. We need you, yes. Amanda. We yes. need you in the body. We need you to be fully you and father i thank you that amanda if even for making amanda a woman i thank exactly, you that yeah. even in our house with the upper room the lord's been really speaking to us about women and how women are gonna lead are gonna yeah. lead us to the lord so we bless you amanda as a woman mm-hmm. that you are that you hear the lord that you hear the lord just as a man 
You hear the Lord equally. You yeah. hear the Lord, Amanda, and you're put in that position for a reason. So God, I thank you for even the strength. I thank you for the strength. I thank you that you're one like, uh, is it J, I don't even know how to say it, JL? The one that puts a peg, a peg in that man's yeah. mind. Like uh, JL, there we go. Yeah. And I feel like it's this, like she's a woman, she's beautiful, but she's, she's also gonna kill somebody if they're coming against the Lord. <laughs> I'm not saying you're going to kill someone, but I am saying is that there's something about you in there yeah. that's like that, that has to come out. And I just feel like even through these frustrating things that you find yourself in, it's like, uh, and you're going to do it with grace and love, but it'll be the truth. And, so and, we bless you with that in Jesus' name. And the thing name. is, you carry God's heart. You carry God's heart. And so, I'm, yeah, so you, you, you know you hear him. So we bless you. Amanda. We bless you. We yes. Bless you, you're doing such a good job. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I, I'm from Traverse City. We have a group. What's your name? I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi, um, and I help lead worship. And I just had a question, actually, for you guys, but also potentially for you as well. And so, like, yeah. so we talk about this. <laughs> we talk about this culture of worship, and I think it's such a blessing that you guys are in a house of worship that you also have. It's a prayer room. So, I mean, you can just build that, like, every day and just train people in that. And that's, um, in Traverse City, we have Grand Traverse House of Prayer, which is really helpful. So we have another spot that you can go to and pray and whatever. But how do you, um, how do you train people, like, coming in from traditional church backgrounds and, you know, like, training them because it's easy for us to be on the worship team and be and me specifically I struggle with I want to be there I want to be doing like you know upper room I want to like have you know whatever and just all those glory moments and everything and thankfully we have pastors who are also worship leaders and they help usher in that but how do we train people with gentleness and communication Beautiful. and kindness how do we do that and take them with us like you were talking about unity instead of being like so far ahead that they're like i don't know where we are you know because we want them to be with us how do we how do you guys how do we do that how to train someone from a very practical standpoint i mean that's a great great question i, I do have something it's, uh, do you want to uh, go for it yeah uh, is that okay <laughs> Um, actually, I heard this from somebody, uh, he's a pastor in Miami, and uh, I, I, I thought it was amazing. He said, uh, he said to give more to those, like, in a sense, he said, to, specifically to the musicians or other worship leaders, give them more. Like, if you see a musician and be like, hey, you're going to run MD today. Be like, well, I don't, you're going to do it, and we're going to trust you. So good, bro. And then it, put them on the spot. Or a singer, hey... Uh, maybe they're a little shy. Hey, you're going to lead today, and we're going to follow you. And, and if they fall flat on their face, it's like afterwards, it's like, hey, we trust you still. And like a good leader comes under. So it's like coming under these people and giving them trust, like musicians, singers, uh, giving them more, yeah. empowering them, giving. That's what, like, to be honest with you, our pastor, our pastors, they don't sing. They come from a Church of Christ background, which, you know, if you, they don't really do music which is really funny. It's all a cappella. And so they have literally just handed us the mics and said, like, hey, you guys do it. You guys lead. And we've had times, <laughs> we've had, remember one time, like this was years ago, we didn't, you didn't sing for 45 minutes. <laughs> this wasn't a Sunday service. He didn't sing for 45 minutes. <laughs> and our pastor was like, hey, Joel, we need you to sing a song. <laughs> but <laughs> it was 45 minutes of just nothing. Yeah. And it was a whole church service. So uh, just practically, it's like learn to just, if you're in leadership, just give them the mic yes. yeah. and, 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 and be ready for a journey. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's say. a good word. Uh, can I say, uh, so I, th I think like bef whenever, before Upper Room and before even music, our passion was just Jesus, you know. Uh, we developed our friendship, the, the foundation was just Jesus, you know. And, uh, and so I feel like, um, um, here, sorry, I'm just like, okay, I completely blinked out. Okay. Oh, no, I got it. I got it. Like, <laughs> uh, so... Whatever the Lord's passion, desire, it put in your heart, he, I feel like he's, it's an invitation for the other people to catch it. And so even like, even like uh, opening up, doing a Bible study or, or just something where, the, where you're leading it and they catch your heart and you, they catch the Lord's burning desire in your heart. And then you start growing from that. So the foundation is always Jesus, you know, the foundation. And so, and then one more thing, um, whenever we started playing music, 
Um, I mean, it was really bad. Like, we had an electric drum set. I was playing guitar, and I have really chubby fingers, and I was just mess up chords all the times. And so, but um, we played until we felt something, you know? And there was times where uh, Sebastian would just be crying on the drums, and I would just be slain and the spirit just until we played something. So, like, um, we, again, practicing the presence. It says key, and just opening up that door and giving, giving the, the musicians, worship leaders, an invitation to do that, so... Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden, like, the encounter that the musicians and the worship leaders are going to happen, because it's the Lord so beautiful, it's going to transfer over. And then, and then it's crazy because, like, we call it in the river. Then the, the congregation starts leading you. It always happens. It always happens. It's like, uh, yeah, so. Yeah. You, just your last question about, like, how do you bring the... I, re, I, was, I was reading this book one time, and it's talking about Stevie Wonder, and he's talking to his bandmates when they're, like, playing on stage, and he's like... If we feel it, I know they feel it. And so on some level, like, if there's that trust up there, you can bring that with you. But really practically, because we've had some people, the hard truth is we've had people that come from that background that have tried to plug in an upper room, and it just hasn't worked. And we've tried. Like, hey, well, Oscar is an incredible musician, and he's actually a really great teacher, too. So he'll sit down. He'll take the time to sit down with people. Maybe you don't have someone like Oscar at your church. Maybe you can hire someone. You can value that for the person. So it might be that. It's like, maybe we just need to get lessons. Sometimes it's a style thing, and that's a, it's another mutual submission. Like, part of that drummer I mentioned before, it was a, part of it was a style thing. It's like, well, this is how I think music should be done. We're like, that's just not where we're at. This is what we're doing, you know? And eventually, it just, there was a break point where it was like, okay, the, you know, we're good. That's, it is what it is, you know? And so on some level, like, you've got to, you have to value it, as opposed to just saying, like, hey, we'll do it. Like, hey, I'm going to, out of my own pocket, I'm going to pay 100 bucks a week so you can get this because we really value you. You know, like whatever your level is. But I, I think that's something we do. We kind of have that built in with Oscar in a sense. Yeah. So if you don't have that, you can get it somewhere, you know. So my email, I'm just kidding. My email address, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, he is the light unto your path and the lamp unto your feet. You see the end goal. Sometimes you don't see step one. So ask the Lord for step one. Yeah. Um, it's important. Um, and two, uh, I feel like the Lord's going to give you structure for your worship. Like, um, yeah, there's structure there, but there's a caught value to it too. You can have the right structure and still miss it. You can have the right people and still miss it. And there's a caught value that I love what, what Gabe said, like find time to connect hearts. And, you know, for us, presence is a big deal. We love the presence of Jesus. And, um just find, make room for that. You know, hey, one hour we're going to spend time with the Lord together. See, and see what the Lord does. And it's a, it's a Julian said it, you're going to go on a journey. What you see today has been a 10-year journey. We've messed up so many times. We've gotten it wrong. And we still get it wrong. You know, it's part of it. But you're with, we're following a man, and that's the end goal. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Uh, just to, like, give some hope, like, I grew up in a really small town with, like, really, um, like, not the best musicians and, like, just as a worship leader, like, serving there. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with, like, those small towns where you're not really sure if your bass player is saved, but, like, he's your bass player, <laughs> you know? Or, like, it, like, if your drummer, like, even knows God... Or like, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, but they're here and they're kind and they're sweet people. I know you guys all know what I'm talking about. Okay. And so like something that like, I think for me that like I, like, because I had this vision of like, man, there's more. I, I want to go somewhere. But like my musicians aren't necessarily capable to lead and take us where I'm feeling I want to go. So how do I do what you're doing and something that like I noticed would help is I would ask my bass player like hey what do you listen to like what songs does your heart connect with you know and there was like oh there's this mercy me song that I really love and mercy me maybe was not what I listened to all the time but because I valued him I would learn the song oh. and I'd put it on the set list That's so and so and so the same thing with, like, my drummers or my electric guitar player. Like, what are you listening to? What do you like? Like, what are you worshiping to outside of here? And it was really kind of valuing, like, I value what you bring. And I, I want us, like, I 
I don't want you just to learn songs for me. I want to learn songs for you. And I, I, want, I want you to be like, I want you to see that I value and I value what you bring. And so it takes a lot of humility to do that. But at the same time, I watched that bass player get so inspired. And I would watch him show up because I remember there was a specific bass player at my home church who like was just kind of like there, you know. And so I was like, hmm, like he keeps showing up, though. So what what is it about him? Like what keep what, what keeps these people showing up, you know, that I sometimes don't always value because they're not going where I want to go. You know, and so I was just like, hey, man, his name, like, I'm not going to say what his name is, actually, but I love him. I, I just recently saw him and his wife again, and I kid you not, in it, like a year and a half span, he grew exponentially because I would just ask, hey, what songs are you feeling for this weekend? And he wasn't going to sing them, he wasn't going to lead them, but I wanted him to know I valued what he brought. Yeah. And when, like, when you give people that opportunity, like, dude, and I'll ask my prayer set this now in Dallas. I asked him, like, hey, if there's songs you're listening to during the week that your heart's connecting with, let me know. I'll learn it if I don't know it. And I'll put it on our set. Because I've, it's the point of we're all going together, and I don't, I'm not just wanting them to follow me, you know? So, yeah, that might help. Like, little practical things, because it's not like, you probably don't have an influx of just so many millennials and Gen Zers with their computers and all the stuff, like, flooding in. But you do have faithfulness, and val- like if, when you value their faithfulness, they'll begin to value your vision. Yeah. And the next thing you know, they want to grow. They want to lead. They'll look up whoever you're listening to and figure out their guitar tones and things like that, you know. And then I'd put a vision before him, like, hey, I love these songs. So I would learn things for him and then give him things to listen to. Like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this song in a couple weeks. Would you listen to this for me? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Because I put that Mercy Me song on. You know what I mean? Like, so... It, but that's yeah that's my thought so awesome. yeah awesome hey um can we give some honor uh to the whole upper room team that was insane